Oh no, my car won't start. I'm gonna need some jumper cables. What, actually, what's that over there? Interesting looking place. Good eye, welcome to Big Al's House of Jump. What can I do for you? Oh, the sign outside said Big Al's Jump Emporium? Oh, it does, for various legal reasons. We can't use that name anymore though. Oh, what happened? Not quite certain about that, but I can tell you this. I had no idea the Better Business Bureau had a SWAT team. I, I did not know that, but actually my car is right down the street. I think I've got a dead battery. Do you guys sell jumper cables? Jumper cables? No, we don't carry those at all. Oh, what do you sell? Well, let me tell you, Oil 7, we got a brand new batch of jumping jacks. 97, 98, 99. And over here on aisle three, seven different kinds of jump ropes. This is all seashells, damn by the seashore. And then out back, just showed up this morning, fresh batch of jumper lanes. Jumpoline? Wait, do you mean trampoline? No mate, we don't use that language around here. We call them jumpolines, more respectful. You know, I'm just gonna head down the street. I think I saw an auto zone. Oh, you jump on down there. Should they get you fixed right up. Oh, but hold on before you go. Take the sidewalk, not the back alley. Why, what's wrong with the alley? Well, between you and me, I saw some angry looking blokes out there this morning. I think they might try and jump you. Recently, my girlfriend's car wouldn't start, which normally wouldn't be a concern for me, except I was actually trying to drive her car at the time, which suddenly made it a concern for me. Normally, what I would do in this situation is go out and buy a new battery and put it in and get the car to start, and then I would find out it's not the battery, so I'd buy a starter and put that in, and then I'd find out it's not the starter, it's something with the ignition, so I'd buy more parts and I'd put those in, and i just keep throwing parts at the car until it works. And I thought this time, you know what? Let's try something different. Let's actually try and diagnose what the problem is, which means I got to buy a new tool. Down in this drawer labeled automotive, you'll find various wires and chargers and my brand new 12 volt battery tester. And if you're lucky enough like me to have a fleet of non-running decrepit vehicles, you probably have a lot of batteries that we can test. We have a brand new battery. We have my old Plymouth battery, which was actually overcooked and completely destroyed by a bad battery tender. We have a AGM battery. And then I need to get a wrench and go to Volkswagen because that battery is dead also. actually got the right size wrench on the first try. We have a couple different types of batteries we can test with our fancy new battery tester. We have a regular flooded lead acid battery. We've got a small flooded um, UTV side-by-side -side motorcycle battery. We have an AGM glass mat battery. And then we have a brand new battery. This is the new battery that's going to go into my Volkswagen. But even if you don't have a fancy, fancy, this was $20 online, battery tester, there's a couple ways you can tell if your battery's probably not working. One is your car's not starting. Two would be the age of the battery. A flooded battery like this is probably gonna last three or four years. An AGM battery might last a little bit longer. You might get five, might get six years out of it. You can also use a multimeter to see if you're getting somewhere between 12 and 13 volts out of your battery. This guy is reading a little bit less than 12 volts. Not too bad, but a voltmeter isn't really going to tell me what's going on inside of the battery. That's what the battery tester does. So let's take a look at what this magical device is gonna do. First things first, I'm gonna peel this off just for you viewers at home. Oh yeah, oh that's classy. Don't be concerned, I'm not sick, but I did read the instruction manual so I can explain what this thing does. This thing, the battery tester, actually sends a small AC current through the battery and then reads the AC current to tell you the inside condition of the battery. So it's gonna tell you, you might be getting close to 12 volts, but your cranking amps, they're completely dead. Or they might tell you that the inside of the battery is all corroded and it's not gonna hold a charge. So, I don't know, let's test out these various states of decrepit batteries. There are all different types of battery testers out there. This one is not fancy at all. So there's no power button, it just turns on when you hook it up to the battery. And then it's gonna ask me a couple questions. It wants to know what kind of battery it is. I've got standard flooded, I've got AGM, I've got gel, I've got EFB, whatever that is. This one I know is standard flooded. It's then going to ask me to put one of these inputs in, CCA, IEC, SAE. CCA cold cranking amps, I can see that right up here on top of my battery. So that's what we're going to enter. 
Almost. Oh, too far. Too far. And then we hit go. And it thinks. And yeah. Um, we have an internal resistance of 200 milliohms. We have eight volts and we have nine, nine cranking amps. This battery is toast. Now this internal resistance milliamps, that's really interesting. And I did look up what that means. So let's test the next battery and we'll talk about what that figure is and what that's telling us. Mild change of plans. My side-by-side -side battery was so just completely cooked and destroyed by the bad charger. I couldn't even test it. So we're moving on to our deep cycle AGM battery. Red to red, black to black. And our tester turns on. AGM, I'm going to select AGM. 930 cranking amps. And let's run our test. Ooh, 2% replace. And right there are 105 milliohms. That's basically testing the internal resistance of a battery. Batteries have lots of metal plates and lots of different chemicals inside of it, not to get too technical, and because I don't understand actually a lot about how they work, but that's measuring the resistance internally. And on a healthy battery, a battery that you could possibly salvage, you're gonna get milliamps between zero and maybe 10. A brand new battery off the shelf, you should have maybe zero to five. A battery that's a few years old, five to 10, you can actually salvage it. If we go back to the drawer, we can see what we would try and salvage it with. This is a very smart battery charger, which means it has a circuit board inside of it that's going to safely charge your battery, but also it can run a reconditioning cycle. It can charge and discharge and charge and discharge and try and take some of the scale off the inside of the battery to get those milliohms down to get your battery a little healthier. So if you're hitting about 10 milliohms on maybe like a five-year-old battery, you can run a reconditioning cycle, probably give it some more life, um, 105 milliohms. Yeah, this is, is trash. And for our last test, we have the brand new battery that's about to go in the Volkswagen. So I would expect to see a full 12 and a half to 13 volts on this battery. I would expect to see milliohms less than five. Um, and hopefully I get 100% on my battery health. Standard flooded battery, full cranking amps. And I have 660 of those bad boys. Run our test. Look at that, 100% internal resistance, 3.1. That's perfect for a brand new battery. I'm getting almost 13 volts and 968 regular cranking amps. I think this thing is going to do just fine to start a Volkswagen with, well, it's 50 years old now, so it's probably down to about 30 horsepower. And just for fun, I want to test this. This is the battery box that I made that actually replaced this. My sailboat used to run off of this battery. That's old, that's toast. And I made this, which runs my boat off of, well, off of dual power tool batteries. So let's, um, let's put a big battery in there. Turn green, turn green, there we go. This is saying I'm getting 12 volts. There's no option here for DeWalt batteries, so I don't know. We'll do it as standard. It's a power tool battery, so we'll go cranking amps, and we're gonna set it super low because it is a 20 volt power tool battery. Maybe there's math so I can do this conversion, but I doubt it. 250 sounds good. Hey, 24%. 12.2 volts. My homemade battery box is healthier than a real battery. I know that test means absolutely nothing, but I was just wanted to see if I could use my tester on something it's not even designed for, so I know those readings don't mean a thing. Should I? No. Why don't we actually test the car that I drive every day? Let's head out here. Pop the hood. Let's see what we got. We got a nice battery. Is there a date code on this? Looks like January of 2018. So 19, 20, 21, 22. It's probably getting close to the end of its life, but let's see how healthy the battery tester says it is. Negative to negative. Positive to positive. Is this a, yeah, this is a AGM battery. 
850 cold crank. Oh, whoops, wrong button. 850. Here we go. Let's run our test. Come. Wow. Wow. Very low, less, less internal resistance than my brand new battery. State of health, 100%. Um, if you want a battery that's going to do really good, buy whatever this is. Red Odyssey Supreme. This thing is four years old and in better condition than my brand new cheap Volkswagen battery. So yeah, I should have bought one of these instead. Huh. It's good to know. To wrap things up, little battery tester, super handy, super convenient. Can probably give you some insights on your battery if it's time to replace it or if you can get some more life out of it. This one was pretty cheap. There's more expensive ones out there. If you have a really nice one and you think it's better, feel free to let me know. Although I know I've said this multiple times, don't cheap out on your battery tenders and your battery chargers because I swear my battery charger I had on the Polaris on this little battery, I think it ruined the ECU in that thing because I've replaced so many parts and that's the last thing I haven't replaced. And it's just, I had a bad battery tender on it. It cooked the battery and suddenly I have electrical problems. So I'm not skimping out on my chargers anymore. I got some really good chargers, some smart chargers that have some technology and some chips that'll stop charging the battery when it's full and then top it back up for the Austin Healy, which isn't currently running, and for the Bug, which is kind of running. I got chargers that you permanently install, so just when you're at home, you can plug it in because maybe you drive it every couple weeks, every couple months, every couple years. But most importantly, and I leave you at this, if you have some chargers that possibly, maybe, most definitely murdered your Polaris, well, well, it's time to say goodbye to these. So to the trash can, these chargers go. And to you at home, may you never need jumper cables. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave an angry comment below and we'll see you next time. Now, when your brother texts you and asks you to record yourself jumping on a trampoline for 10 seconds, you don't ask why, you just do it. Am I certain I'm going to regret this? Yes. Did I do it anyways? Also yes.